Hey everyone, welcome to Our Small Footprint. Uh, today I obviously have forgotten to do an intro this morning, so it's evening while I'm doing it. Uh, but today was a kitchen day again, one of my common sort of a themes around here. Uh, but I had to deal with that pork that I had marinated so that had to be minced up and canned and we made lasagna soup and sourdough baguettes and that sort of thing so come along and see what happened in my kitchen today and I will see you again in the next day or so we have the chickens to pick up Saturday and we also have the food hamper on Saturday so I will share both of those uh, probably in separate videos because they're very different timing and I don't want to make a video that's too long and chickens and food hamper not necessarily the same video content so we'll see uh, we also have been rearranging the kitchen and things like that so I'll have to share that with you as well uh, but I will see you in the next day or so with another video about one of those items see you later guys First thing I had to do for the morning was to pull the gnocchi out of the freezer that I had flash frozen. So this seemed to have worked well. Overnight it's solid, it comes off the silicon trays really easily and that sort of thing. So that was the first thing I did for the day so that I could use the silicon and that that I had tied up in the freezer with that. So I bagged it all up into gallon Ziploc bags with gnocchi written on it that way I can reuse those Ziploc bags for gnocchi anytime I have more to freeze uh, it'll just go back into the freezer when it's emptied and then when I'm looking for more I just look for the one with it labeled out and each bag held about 1.2 kilos worth of gnocchi so I will uh, see how that goes as to whether one bag would probably work as a side if it's served with something else for the kids and Daryl if it's going to be the main meal I probably need both bags for that meal so I definitely need to make large quantities of it and even freezing it like this it's not necessarily the answer because they take up a fair bit of room in the freezer once they're in these bags so I may just freeze the sweet potato flat in the gallon bags and make the gnocchi when I want it because that's the bags of sweet potato are going to take up a lot less space than the bags of frozen gnocchi so I will see how I go with that once I got that all sorted the next thing I did was shape the baguettes so the baguettes were an overnight proof I made them yesterday and they proofed inside overnight uh, these are an Emily Raffa recipe uh, I will link her book in the description and this is rather a wet loose dough it's really easy to work with with a little bit of flour and they're just really easy to make you mix it all up the night before and then in the morning you put it out on a well floured tray and you fold it in half and flour it a bit more sort of pat it out into a bit of a rectangle and then I mark it out from like middle points and then middle points and then middle points so that they're fairly even and then as you pick each piece up you twist it as you're placing it onto the tray and it ends up as a baguette type thing with the little uh, twists and, and uh, angles to it while it's cooking so I just mark them out place each one on the tray and do that for both batches so this is a quadruple batch like eat I made each container has a double batch of dough in it and I made two lots of them to fill two trays worth of the baguettes though I did try cooking these in the wood stove and it didn't work fantastically well um, the wood stove cavity is fairly small and by putting both trays in there I think it just reduced the heat that both trays were getting I did rotate the trays a fair bit but it didn't seem to work very well one still ended up really flat and they ended up sort of sooted from the uh, tray being above it being in the wood stove so for these I think I would need to bake them one at a time which is probably fine because it took a whole lot longer to cook them with both of them in there anyway probably twice the amount of time so I could probably cook single trays in the same amount of time that I had two in there and was fardassing around swapping them over and things like that once they were done we cut them up to eat for lunch so the kids had theirs with whatever they wanted on them some had peanut butter some had some leftover lasagna soup no that wasn't that day I'm not sure what they had but they had bread with their for lunch and I decided to try the boiled egg mode on the Thermomix so the 
novelty item on the Thermix is that it has a boiled egg mode and you can select how you would like your egg boiled whether it's super soft or hard boiled and things like that and all you do is you put your eggs in there up to six eggs in there a liter of water and turn it on and it senses the temperature of the water and then how long it needs to get to that state of boiled uh, it worked really well it, once it chimed I stuck them in cold water like you do with boiled eggs to stop them from continuing to cook and then when I served up our lunch I just had some baguette with some mayo and a bit of bacon and we just had the eggs on top I had forgotten how hard it is to peel a fresh day old egg so I did demol like damage them quite a lot trying to peel them but as you can see the yolk in the middle is perfectly soft it's perfectly soft boiled and it was really nice it's just a matter of the fact that I couldn't peel it neatly at all the next thing I had to start on was that I'm going to do the sausage and potato soup in the jars with the pork that I had marinated yesterday so first up I sliced a whole bunch of onions really finely and stuck them in the cast iron pan to caramelize it takes quite a while for onions to caramelize so I thought that that was a good first step so we I sliced them all up and got them in the pan with a little bit of lard and left them in the pan and kept on stirring them as needed once I had them going I started mincing the pork so I'm just using the KitchenAid mincer on the large grind plate and feeding the pork through slowly just standing there and getting it all done so we just put the pieces in the top and use the plunger to keep it pressure on it and it does it fine in winter it's it's not really an issue you can do quite large quantities and some sometimes you have to let the machine cool down a little bit but for today there wasn't a huge amount that I was doing and it's quite cool so I just fed it all the way through until I got all of it done once the onions were cooked to my liking, sort of soft and caramelized and how I like to eat them, I removed them from the pan and put them aside in a bowl. So I just, however you happen to like your onions, get them to that point, remove them and put them aside. And then I cooked the sausage mince off. So cooked it off in batches and you only want it just broken apart and just done just cooked because when you're canning it if you put it in there raw it's going to clump together and stick together so you want to cook it off that little bit so that it has the uh, the way of staying into separate crumbles rather than clumping together into like patty type thing uh, so cook it until it's just done and do it in batches you don't want to overcrowd the pan so I did it in I think four batches cooked it all up and then put it aside once it was all cooked I mixed it with the onions and I forgot to show but I did cook up some bacon pieces I just diced up some rasher bacon and cooked that off as well so I mixed the caramelized onions with the cooked sausage and the bacon pieces all up together once I had all that going I had diced up a whole lot of potatoes as well so I've pre-done that while everything else was going and then I started filling my jars so I put two cups of the sausage onion bacon mix into each jar and then topped it with these with the potato chunks and a little bit of beef bouillon uh, you don't have to use the bouillon I did because I'm using homemade chicken stock uh, that whilst it's very nice is not hugely flavorful so and this being a soup we would generally mix one of the jar these jars with a jar of stock as well which will water the flavor of the sausage down a little bit so I just added a bit of beef bouillon then I topped them all up with stock to sort of the the mark on the neck uh, to begin with then I debubbled all the jars and adjusted the headspace so I used the fowlers I found the fowlers to bubble up but a chopstick works with the back end of a spatula or just something plastic and you slide it down the sides of the jars so that you're getting any air bubbles and letting the the product in the jar settle a little bit and once that's done that adjust the headspace so add a little bit of extra stock when needed you know move potato pieces from one jar to the other whatever you need to do to get them all evenly sorted with a good headspace once that was all done I cleaned the rims with white vinegar like normal just use a cloth and clean all the rims of the jars with the white vinegar and then put the rings on them I tend to run some white vinegar around the rings as well just to make sure that no grease from my hands has gotten onto the rings as well 
Uh, this probably isn't always necessary, but I, I like to do it because I worry that I'm going to spread some uh, grease onto these rings and then it's going to, you know, need it. So I clean the rings as well. And then I also clean the inside of the lids as I go and place the lids on to each of the jars. Now, these jars are 1200 mil jars and they have size four lids. After that, I put the clips on. Now, the Fowler's rule of thumb is a single clip for jars. I've mentioned before, pressure canning, I prefer to use two clips because my clips are quite old and stretched and it makes me more comfortable. My choice, but uh, Fowler's says you only need one clip per jar. Then they all went in the canner. So my Buffalo can hold eight of these jars and they've still got plenty of movement between them, which is really nice. So they went on and because they're a 1200 mil jar, they go for quart size plus 20%, which ended up being 108 minutes, I think it was. After that, I rolled out some fresh pasta dough. So I made fresh dough. I used the Thermix and just quickly made the dough up and let it rest for half an hour. And then I rolled it out. We're having lasagna soup for dinner. I don't think I filmed anywhere that I was making it, but that was what I did with the other half of the stock. So half the stock went into the uh, jars and the other half of the stock that I had left over, I made lasagna soup with. So I brought the stock up to a boil and then I added two of my 1.2 kilo bags of bolognese that were from the freezer into the stock and then added a jar of pasta sauce and some uh, Worcestershire sauce and a bit of salt and pepper and things like that just for the flavor um, and then I made this pasta so I rolled it all out normal process you start at eight which is the thickest down to one and I cut it roughly because this is lasagna soup it doesn't have to be precise in any way the pasta can be cut however you want it it doesn't really matter uh, the shorter is better than longer for this because you're going to be eating it with a spoon so if you think about trying to pick up a long piece of pasta with a spoon it's not all that much fun so i uh, cut it all and hang it until i was ready once the lasagna soup was up to a boil so all those ingredients had come up to a boil the kids helped me put the pasta into the soup so we just place it into the soup and bring it back up to a simmer it does take a good sort of 25 minutes, I reckon, for the pasta to get lovely and soft in the soup. It takes longer for that pasta to cook in the soup because it's cooking in like a, a fatty tomatoey liquid rather than water. Uh, and this is how we serve it. We had leftover baguettes with it as well. So you can add cheese or sour cream or whatever you want on it too. But this is what it looks like. After that, I pulled all the jars out of the canner and put them on the bench so they sit on the bench overnight and then tomorrow i pull the clips off wash them and put them on the shelf and that was it for the day so thank you very much for joining me again and i will see you next time